this gospel of the kingdom will be preached in all the world. And he said unto me, You must prophesy again. Hello, everyone. Welcome back to the Trumpet Daily. Uh, I recently received a note from an individual who had completed our uh, 36 lesson Bible correspondence course, and he was a little bit distraught, talked about uh, how that after he finished everything, he had written out all the questions and the scriptures and put it all together. Uh, and then somehow or another, uh, by accident, he lost about two thirds of his lessons. So he was asking to see if we could resupply him with the lessons that he had already gone through so that he could have it as a keepsake in his notebook. And along with uh, that comment or that request, he also, in saying how grateful he was for the course, he, he mentioned that we might even consider giving a more prestigious kind of award to those that complete uh, the course, as opposed to just the certificate that we send out at the end. And I just really appreciated uh, how much he appreciated that cor course, how much he evidently loved going through the Bible and this correspondence course that we send out free of charge at no cost or obligation to you. He felt like, this individual felt like he, he had really achieved something, and he had. And he should be excited about what he had accomplished. He should be proud of it. Recently we had a message here in this auditorium about Bible study, and the individual speaking talked about uh, just how he got into the study and was going to give one uh, message on it, and then he got so far into it, he wanted to give another one. He felt like it had to be a two-part series. And he talked about how in that study, we have to be almost obsessed with our Bible study. It has to really be an anchor in our daily activities. What kind of priority do you put on your study of God's Word? How high of a priority is it for you in your daily life. How well do you know uh, Bible prophecy? How much do you know about the future because of what God teaches you in Bible prophecy? How much do you know about God's purpose and plan for man? We've recently, as you know, been going through a series on church history because we've been covering the book of Revelation and Revelation 2 and 3 goes into the history of those uh, seven church eras, and had you lived during the Middle Ages, during the Thyatira era, for example, you wouldn't have been able to enroll in this course. You couldn't have gotten the Armstrong College Bible Correspondence course. As I explained in a program uh, last week, the, the production, the, the distribution, uh, even the study of the Bible was very difficult. Even if you had the materials, just because of a, a lack of, of education and, and because the, the most popular church at the time even discouraged study of the Bible, it would have been very difficult to study God's Word, impossible to go through a course as extensive as this. Back then, as, as we've covered, the people of God, I mean, they really had to fight to keep the truth alive. They had to fight to preserve God's truth. They had to commit large sections of the Bible to memory. And some of God's people had to go through the tedious process of, of translating and, and writing the Bible out by hand, word by word, letter by letter. You can see why they knew so much of the Bible, even by heart. Now, as I explained last week, the situation today is different. Most people uh, really still don't study the Bible, but it's not because they're unavailable. People today just aren't interested in God's Word. They're not interested in studying the Bible. And if we're not careful, even those of us that know it's God's inspired truth, even those of us that know it's, it's His Word, we too can succumb to the pulls of human nature, which pulls us away from the truth of God. I mean, be honest and think about how human nature <laughs> prevents you 
from doing what you know you need to do with respect to Bible study, for one. I mean, we just don't like to do hard things. It's not easy to study God's Word. Isaiah said that it's put together here a little, there a little. You can't just read it from cover to cover. I mean, some have, have done that. Not that that's of no value. But as far as understanding it, I mean, you have to piece it together like a jigsaw puzzle, as Mr. Armstrong taught us in Mystery of the Ages. And of course, you need God's help, even as you study, His inspiration, His guidance. It's work, hard work. And human nature tends to be lazy. It's the spirit of this age. And we don't want to engage in something that's very difficult to do. Added to that, it's, it's easy for us to convince ourselves that, well, we already know it or we've, we've already heard it before. Oh, another message about how we should study. It's easy to just push it aside and to say, well, I've already gotten into that before. I've already heard that message. I've already read that scripture. In this, this uh, course, we uh, encourage our uh, students to set aside time daily to study God's Word. Make it a daily part of your schedule. Treat it like a college course where you have to show up at 8 a.m. for that class. That's your time with God. That's your time with God's Word. Set that time aside daily and then go through the, the seemingly tedious process of looking up all of the scriptures and even writing it out. You'll be glad that you did. If you've never done that, as difficult and as tedious as that might seem, try it. Try it. We're going to read an example here in just a second from Deuteronomy and see that this was not something unusual in ancient Israel. So we follow that same pattern with this course. I mean, obviously there's no instructor standing over your shoulder. It's on you. You receive it in the mailbox and then you decide. You set aside the time. You pull together the materials. You get out your Bible. You turn to the scriptures. You write things out. And God will teach you. But human nature tends to be, as I said, very lazy and also sloppy and overconfident. We assume that we know more than we do. And so, as I say, people skim, or they read the first paragraph, or they hear the first few minutes of the video, and then turn it off. They don't stay with it. I've, I've mentioned before how few that actually start the course get all the way through to the end, like that individual that wrote me. A small percentage actually make it to the finish line in studying God's Word, in studying through this course. It's hard work to complete it. If you think about also the fact that we're so forgetful, even if you have read it before, even if you have been taught these basics, these truths, human beings are forgetful. The Bible says that we need to give the more earnest heed to those things that we've heard, lest we let them slip away. Pay attention to those things that you've heard before that study through the church eras certainly highlights just how forgetful even God's own people can be. The people of God, those people that had the Spirit of God dwelling in them. But along the way, they lost interest in studying the way that they did early on in their conversion. Has that happened to you? Have you ever done that? We've all done that. We've all made that mistake. We've all gotten lazy. We've all stopped at times, which is why we need regular reminders. Another barrier to regular study is the fact that we just don't appreciate how awesome God's truth is. We get desensitized to it, just like we're desensitized to the, the evils in this world. It's, there's so much of it around us. The same can happen with God's truth. I mean, we've been given so much and we have so much to offer you on our website, so many booklets, hundreds of booklets, articles, books, courses. As I said in that program last week, Bibles to go around by the billions. And yet we can 
not appreciate that the way that we should. We can become desensitized to the truth, to good things, to revelation from God. If we're not careful, do we value God's word like that pearl of great price? Would we, if we lived in the Middle Ages, would we exchange everything that we have like Peter Waldo did and really commit to learning the truth of the Bible? Is it that important to you? Does it mean more than anything else? God's truth? God's word? It should, but human nature wants to convince us that, well, it might be nice on the side, but it's not really essential. We don't really need to give up anything for it. Another reason we shy away from studying God's word is because we, we don't like being corrected. We don't like being told that we're on the wrong course, that we're off track. Mr. Armstrong used to say that the, the hardest thing for any of us to, to admit is that we're wrong. And if you're studying the Bible the right way, you're going to see just how wrong you've been. <laughs> you're going to see just how many mistakes you're making. But that's a good thing. Forget about what the world says. That correction is bad. That reproof is wrong. That we, won't, we don't want to talk about this God of, uh, of uh, judgment. Just talk about love and don't really get into the business of, of making changes in life. Don't really alter your behavior. God is a God of love. But what is God's love? For this is the love of God that we keep His commandments. We'll look at that more closely here in just a second. That's what God's love is. Do you struggle with any of these obstacles? Well, you know you do, because we all have to battle human nature. We all have to battle that influence coming from the devil, that pull. That pull against doing what we know we should be doing. If we've succumbed to these tendencies, then then we're not receiving the many benefits that come along with studying God's Word. And there are many. There are many. We're going to cover just a few here in the time that remains today over in Deuteronomy 17. Please get your Bible and, and read along and see what some of these practical, wonderful benefits are. But to receive them, I mean, we've got to develop the habit and sustain it this habit of, of rigorous, exciting, daily, personal Bible study. It needs to happen uh, daily. And from time to time, we need to go through a self-examination process to see how we're measuring up, to see how much we love God's Word, to see how disciplined we are with our daily time and activities, to see what kind of priorities we put on study of God's Word, praying to God. There's several passages in the Bible that talk about the effects of, of daily Bible study. This is just one of them, Deuteronomy uh, 17 here. We'll refer to a, a, a few of, of the others here as we proceed. But suffice it to say, I mean, there's a lot of profit that comes from study. It's profitable, Paul said to Timothy. It's profitable to dig into God's Word. But it's more than just, you know, we ought to do it because we'll receive benefits for doing it. God actually commands us to do this. God expects it. God says, go and study daily. God, as we'll see at the end of this, this video, God says, you need it. Just like you need physical food. Are we that careless with our physical diets to just go along and skip a day here and there and to think nothing of it. When you do that sort of thing, you, you become hungry. Your body tells you, I need sustenance. I need food. Look at Deuteronomy 17 here, starting in verse 15. It says, You shall uh, in any wise set him king over you, whom the Lord your God shall choose. One from among your brethren shall you set uh, king over you. You may not set a stranger over you, which is 
not your brother. So God here is about to list these kingly qualifications. This is what you need in a leader. This is what you'd need in a, in a king, in a monarch. And well, we could say, well, that's not me. I'm not a king in ancient Israel. That's not really for me. It is for you. God really praised the Bereans in Acts 17. Look at this verse, Acts 17 and verse 11. These were more noble, the Bereans, than those in Thessalonica in that they received the word with all readiness of mind and searched the scriptures daily, whether those things were so. Now go and study that word noble sometime on your own. And see the royal meaning of that word. See what it means to be noble, to be well-born, as it means in the physical sense, or high in rank. Spiritually speaking, that's what we are. If we're God's servants, if we're God's saints, we're the nobility of this world. Because we dig into the book, this royal book, this royal law, as it says in James 2. What a privilege we have to study these royal truths. In verses uh, 16 and 17 there, it talks about how Israel's kings can't get caught up in the things of this world. They can't get caught up into materialism, physical things. They've got to rise above that. They've got to put the focus on the spiritual. They've got to put God first. And whenever Israel's kings didn't do that, the whole nation ran into trouble. Back in Deuteronomy here, look at verse 18. It says, And it shall be, when he sits upon the throne of his kingdom, that he shall write him a copy of this law in a book out of that which is before the priests and Levites. God told him to write it down, to read it, to study it, to write it every day. Set aside time daily to study the law, to study God's word. Read it and, and then write your own copy out. This wasn't unusual, as I said earlier. This was expected because of all those, those barriers that are there because of human nature. How forgetful we are, how lazy we can be, how much we shy away from correction. All those things. We've got to fight that. And the way to do it is to have a daily Bible study program and to go through it as this course suggests. Set aside time daily, look up every single scripture, and write a good many of them out. What a wonderful exercise. Verse 19, it says, And it shall be with him, and he shall read therein all the days of his life, that he may learn to fear the Lord his God, to keep all the words of this law and these statutes, to do them. And then verse 20, notice these benefits as well. It says that his heart be not lifted up above his brethren and that he turn not aside from the commandment to the right hand or to the left to the end that he may prolong his days in his, in his kingdom, he and his children in the midst of Israel. As I said, this is just one example, just one passage that highlights a number of benefits. Several of them are rattled off there in those two verses, verses 19 and 20. Firstly, that, that if you study God's word daily, it teaches you to properly fear God. Fear God. None of us wake up in the morning fearing God. Most don't even want to talk about fear. Oh, fear, cowering, that sort of, that's the way they think of fear. But to fear God is to fear Him like a humble, obedient servant, like a child who properly fears his father because he knows he's the authority. He's the head of the home. He's the final say. And he's there sacrificing for the family. He's there providing for the family. He's there loving the family. He's there disciplining the family, correcting the children when necessary. That's a, a healthy kind of fear that we want to have for God the Father. Now that's something we have to learn. It doesn't come natural. We have to learn to fear God. And the way we learn to do that is by deepening our relationship with God. Digging into His inspired Word. I mean, this Bible, this Bible that you're reading from, that's God's, that's God's mind. That's God's lifestyle. That's God's way of thinking in print, which is why it's essential for us to study. 
That's how we get to know God. The more we know the Bible, the more we know God. And to know God, to really know God, is to fear God, to fear Him. That's what regular Bible study in a right attitude, that's what it builds, that proper fear for God. There's a lot of people in the world today that think they know God, but really they've just, they've just set up an idol in their own minds and hearts that they think is God. It's not the God of the Bible, sadly. Most people in this world have rejected him and his law and his truth. In the Proverbs, it says the fear of God is the beginning of wisdom. It's the beginning of instruction. So what does that tell you about, again, you could have a separate study or a video, I suppose, just on the attitude or the approach that we have to our Bible study. I just want to stick more to the practical points of it today, but to touch on that subject of fearing God and how that, that's the beginning of wisdom and, and instruction. You see here this beautiful and, and virtuous cycle that the more we study, the, the more we fear. And then the more we fear, the more God can teach us as we study, the more He can open our minds. Look at Matthew 11 and verse 25 sometime and see that if you're a humble and, and teachable child, God will reveal the truths of the Bible to you. But of course, you've got to be putting in your time day in and day out to actually study that word of God. Uh, a second benefit discussed right there in those two verses again is that daily Bible study shows us how to live. Is that important? Look at this world today. Look at the misery and the suffering. We've talked about that recently, just with the number of people that are displaced, that are caught up in the crossfire of terrorist organizations. Look at what's happening in Iraq and elsewhere, Syria, Libya. Look at the Jews that are fleeing Europe. Look at what's happening in Central America and the tens of thousands that are running from places there trying to get into America. The division and the strife. What does it boil down to? Well, people aren't living right. Leaders aren't living right. They're not ruling like the kings that are talked about in Deuteronomy 17. These aren't leaders or rulers today who fear God. It really does boil down to how we're we're living, that verse says, to keep all the words of, his, of this law and these statutes and to do them. To keep there means to, to guard or to protect. It's more than just reading. It's, it's about preserving it, hanging on to it, never forgetting. And then, of course, doing these things to keep these laws, these statutes and to do them. God wants us to get this right way of life into our thinking. He wants us to study it. He wants us to think on it, to meditate on it, and then make sure that we really let it sink in by the way we behave and act, by the lives that we lead, the lifestyle. We've got to apply what we learn in this Bible course or in our daily study of the Bible. Notice these couple of verses in 2 Timothy 3, verse 16. All scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine. So it's, these are some other benefits, you could say. Reproof, correction, instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be perfect, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. Is that a pretty good benefit? I'd say it is. <laughs> Perfection, to become like God, to build godly character, it does reprove us. It is corrective. But that's a good thing. What a benefit even correction is. God's word, if we study it daily, will show us how to live. A third benefit, going back to Deuteronomy 17 here, is that daily Bible study helps us to be humble. It humbles us. It helps us to see ourselves in proper relationship to God. It gives us perspective. What a contrast 
someone who's humbly going before God for understanding and truth. What a contrast between an individual like that and the typical vain, arrogant, narcissistic leaders that you see in the world today when it's all about the self, selfishness, vanity. God didn't want the king in Israel to develop a heart that was lifted up above his people. He didn't want a king to abuse the, the common men. He didn't want kings to get away from their daily Bible study because he knew that if they did, they'd become arrogant and vain and full of pride. And so he said, you stick to these truths. You commit them to memory. You write them down daily. You study it daily. And if you do, it'll change your attitude. It'll give you the right kind of heart. As I said, in Matthew 11, it says that we've got to be childlike. We've got to be teachable. We've got to be malleable. And if we study God's word with the right attitude, not to disprove God's truth, but to search the scriptures daily, as the Bereans did, to prove the truth, to prove that God's right. And the more that we do that, the more God will be able to teach us. The last benefit discussed here in verses um, 19 and 20 uh, is that daily Bible study prolongs our life and the lives of our families. That's a great benefit. You can look at it either in the spiritual sense or the physical. The spiritual is most important. I mean, you think about prolonging your life in the kingdom of God. You think about enriching your life in God's kingdom. Studying the word of God today as the saints of God, those that have been called out of this world and into the church in advance of the rest so that we can then take this truth and teach it to the whole world when salvation is opened up to every, every nation, every race, every, every individual from every possible religious background. The whole world is deceived, it says in Revelation 12. And those few called out first have the glorious opportunity to learn this precious truth now so that we can then take it on out and to teach. The more we learn and understand, the better we can teach. Well, there's physical benefits too with respect to a long life. You can have a more prosperous, a more healthier, a more balanced lifestyle, even in the flesh, by digging into God's Word. Let's just look at one more scripture here before we conclude over into the New Testament. This is just uh, one verse in Matthew 4, a comment that Jesus Christ made in this titanic battle that he had with Satan the devil, who tried to twist and to distort the Word of God. I mean, Satan knew the Word of God, but he had a horrible attitude, and so it didn't have any benefit. Didn't, it didn't have any profit. He didn't have a childlike attitude, and so he took some scriptures and he quoted them and he misquoted them and he twisted them. And Jesus Christ had to set him straight here in Matthew 4 and verse 4 it says, but he answered and said, it is written, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. See, in all these exchanges here, Christ kept responding to the devil with the truth of God by quoting scripture. He, he lived it. He breathed it. He acted it. He knew God's truth. And that's how he went to battle against the devil and his demon army. By really getting grounded in the truth of God. Well, coming back to this verse that we just read, man shall not live by bread alone, physical bread, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. I mean, this is perhaps the most powerful il illustration there is in the Bible uh, of how much we need daily Bible study. Because as I said earlier, you know, physically, you know when you've gone without bread. You know when you're getting hungry. You can't even really go but five, six hours before you start receiving hunger pains. You know that you need physical food. 
every single day. And what Jesus Christ was highlighting here, and you can go and study John 6 uh, to see how that analogy is used over there as well. But what he's highlighting here is that we need daily spiritual food like we need daily physical food. In fact, we need spiritual food more than even physical food. I mean, the Bible even talks about uh, fasting regularly, going without physical food, just to help us better appreciate how much we need to hunger for spiritual food. Hunger for righteousness. As it says in Matthew 5, the next chapter over. It's more important what is it that, going back to the physical, what is it that makes um, food enjoyable to eat? Well, when you take the time, again, our taste buds have been desensitized, and we want something that's fast, something that will satisfy quickly. You can go the fast food route, but it doesn't sati it, you can't sustain a healthy lifestyle for very long on that kind of a diet. Physically, if you take the time to prepare food right, and then if you take the time to sit down at the dinner table and sit down with your family and to enjoy it slowly, it really is something that's satisfying and enjoyable. In the physical sense, as I said, you can hurry right through a meal and not really enjoy it. So what are the lessons that God wants us to take away from this spiritually? Take the time to prepare, to work at it, to get it just right, and then really enjoy God's truth. Enjoy this bread of life. Think about and enjoy what it is that you're studying. This course will really help you to do that. And we offer it to you, as I said, free of charge, at no cost or obligation. And when you receive this course, go through it step by step. Don't hurry. Slow down. Turn to each scripture. Take the time to write things out. Digest it. Be satisfied. Be fulfilled. Be grateful. Be thankful and appreciative of all that God has to offer you. Thank you for joining us today, and we'll see you next time on The Trumpet Daily.